Well, hi there, and welcome to this tutorial for Fastlane Digital Audio School down in Montpellier, France, an Ableton Certified Training Center. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to use Clifix Pro. This remote script enables us to access many functions in live, to access them remotely from a controller or even from MIDI clips within our live sets. Using it, we'll be able to transpose many clips simultaneously in our live set or maybe control the length of our loop in the live set. So let's have a look at how it's done. So the first thing I ought to explain is what actually is Clifix. Well, Clifix is a Python script that was developed by somebody called Stray. It's a bit of a legend in the uh, Ableton world. And Stray basically wrote a script that hacks a lot of the functions in Ableton Live. It allows you to actually do comments, uh, operate live remotely, yeah? so. Um, you all know what a Python script is. A Python script is the protocol that is enabling a special communication between a controller and live. And this is what is actually used every time you use a controller as a control surface in live. Every time a manufacturer makes a new controller, they write a Python script and they give it to the Ableton people who include that into the resources of the app. And this enables special communications between controllers in live. So this is what Python scripts are about. Well, Clifix Pro is a Python script not for a specific controller, but for live globally. So when Stray developed his Python script, he made it free for everyone on the internet. That's called Clifix v2.5.9. I believe this is the latest uh, free version of Clifix. Uh, Clifix has now been revamped recently by Stray, and it's being sold by Isotonic, and it's called Clifix Pro. So you can either buy that Clifix Pro or get the free one. Now, however, remember that Clifix Pro do allow us to hack and to operate push in a way, or push to, sorry, in a way that Clifix number one could not do. Clifix normal, Clifix V2.5.9 does hack push one, but not push two. This is why I think Clifix Pro is a good option. However, you have to buy it from Isotonic. Right, once you've downloaded either of the versions, you have to install it. So Clifix number one, you have to grab inside the folder, this little folder called Clifix, and this is the Python script I was talking to you about. So you, you copy this and you open your apps and you open either Live 9 or 10 with a right click and you open the content. And in the content, you find the app resources um, media remote script and you drop that folder right there and here is mine right with the new Clifix Pro there's an installer so there's one for Mac there's one for PC you install it just as you would install a plugin for example so once this is done it's all done for you automatically and once this is installed you will find within your control surface you will find your Clifix remote scripts okay that's the first one the free one and that's the Clifix Pro so I'm going to install it here in my control surface area and take it off this little uh, slot here and stick it right there look so I'm gonna bring Clifix Pro and I'm not gonna put any controller in front of that slot here once you've done that you should see now you see a square around the clip slot you select and this looks very much like the squares we get with push or launchpad etc but it's around just a single slot and that indicates Clifix is running now how do we work with Clifix? Well, obviously you have to open the manual, yeah? And it's quite important to read that that manual, yeah? And at first, when I first looked at the manual of Clifix, years back, it was like, whoa, 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 I really don't have time for this, I need to make music. However, once I understood years later what I could actually achieve with Clifix, I opened the manual again and I thought, right, now it's time to read the thing. So it's a bit intimidating, but actually not that tricky. If you read properly what's being said to you, it's all explained properly. What's interesting, at first they explain to you how it works, and I'm going to show that to you in a minute. But we have a, a few type of actions. We have X clips, yeah, and this is what I'm going to show you. X cues, that's for the arrangement view. Uh, X control, that's another one I'm going to show you. And X override control, that's a different thing. But I'm going to show you X clips and X controls, which I think are the most relevant ones. Underneath there, you have the action reference. This is all the comments you can actually do using Clifix. So you can add an audio track, you can add an audio track at a specific number, add a MIDI track, etc., etc. And you see, you can do a ramp, BPM ramp. You can do all sorts of amazing comments that you some some of them you could not even do without Clifix. So when I first read these comments, I thought, well, which one could be interesting for me? And the ones I found, and I'm going to show you, are the clip 
actions. Within the clip actions, there's loads of different actions that are interesting. One that I really wanted to do with live for many years is control the loop length of my clips. So I can define the loop length, I can halve the loop length, I can reset the loop length, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And another one that I'm going to show you, and it's really interesting, is the clip semi. So you can transpose your audio clips and many audio clips simultaneously. And this is something I really wanted to do with, with live for many years that I could not achieve. You see that little transpose button here in your audio clips. Well, you can assign it to a controller, but you'd have to select the clip in order to control its transposition. Now this can work okay sometimes, but if I want to transpose many clips simultaneously within a live set, I need to multi-select the clips, which is, in my opinion, not an option on stage. I don't have time to go and select clips. That's just not, not an option. So I never could do that properly. Well, Clifix will enable us to do this. So how does it work? Let's look at the X clips first. I'm going to create a brand new MIDI track and um, you can leave it as is, but I'm going to rename it so you can see properly what's happening. Here you go, Clifix. Don't have to rename it, but I do it anyway. I had actually I made a mistake, a spelling mistake on that. All right, hold on there. Yeah, it's better. Right, so I'll create a new clip, double click. And it's all about the renaming of the clip, the way you rename your clips. As simple as that. The name has to begin with two brackets, one open and one closed bracket. So on a Mac, you do, I think, I believe, Alt, Shift, and bracket. There you go. That's the brackets I'm talking about. Then you can give it a name. You don't have to, but you can give it a name. So And then you close the brackets again. That's it. Once the name of a mini clip starts with these two brackets, that's it. It's a Clifix comment. So how do we check if it works? Well, we, we write. A, I, I did a test there. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do space. Obviously, the way you write things is extremely important. We're coding here. I'm gonna write metro metronome. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, capital letters metro on. That's it. And that's it. Now I'm gonna duplicate that and do a metro off as well. And let's do that. Off. Here you go. Well, guess what's gonna happen as I start this clip the metronome turns itself on. As I start the other clip, the metronome switch itself off. And that's how it works. You write two brackets, a space, and then the comment. And you saw earlier on, the name of the comments are here. There's an example here, the name of the comment, what it does, and an example how to script it. It couldn't really be simpler to code with Clifix. So metronome on is not very uh, useful comment. Let me do the ones I was talking about. So I want to change the transposition on that clip this clip and this clip simultaneously. So I need to write the number of the channel. So let's count. One, two, three. Groups counts as well, yeah? Three, four, five, six, and seven. So that's track seven, eight, and nine. Right, let's do it. I'm going to the name, right, track seven, and then I write a slash, and then I go clip, space, semi, let's do three. For example, then I do a, I think it's called colon, a semicolon or in English, yeah, colon, this guy. And then you go eight slash clip semi three colon space. And then was it nine? Yes, yeah, slash clip semi three. That's it. Done. Now let's observe the transposition of my clips. Let's run them as well so you can actually hear what happens. And let's run the clip. And there you go, you heard it, and you can see the transposition went up three on all three clips simultaneously. Now, let's reset this transposition. Let's just uh, duplicate that clip and go into the name, and let's change the name to clip semi zero instead. Let's keep the same name for the, the tracks, because I still want to move on track seven, eight, and nine. There you go, that's what it takes. And let's reset these clips, shall we? Then we're at plus three, and I'll start the clip. And it went back to zero. Great stuff, isn't it? Yeah, so that's the kind of things we can do with Clifix. So you'd say, right, okay, well, it's a bit, you know, inconvenient to have MIDI clips. Sure, you can uh, map the clips to your controllers and like this, and even, you know, uh, make sure the clip starts immediately with the launch actions, the launch options, sorry, like this, none, boom. That's, that's okay. However, when I launch a clip in live, it launches the sequencer, it launches live, and sometimes that can be annoying. So I much prefer what we call the X controls to actually create or control these same commons I just did, but via a controller, any controller would do, yeah? Push, launch pad, you name it, okay? So let's remove this um, this MIDI track and demonstrate how the X controls are put together. So all I need to do now, first of all in live, is not set Clifix like I did earlier on 
on its own. Instead, I'm going to set Clifix Pro in front of the controller I want to hack. And this is the X-Touch Mini from Beringer. And this is it. I'll just write X-Touch Mini here and X-Touch Mini here. I'll select it here. And I said X-Touch Mini is hacked with Clifix. Now, I'll go to the user folder. So that's like HD, user, Freddy. And here I'll find a native control. This was installed, created, whilst I uh, installed the Clifix Pro. Clifix number one, the, the original Clifix is slightly different. Uh, I'll show you in a minute. So I'll go into the Clifix Pro and here I'll find X control text. And this is where I need to enter the comments that will hack my controller. Uh, for Clifix one, I'll show you quickly. <clears throat> for Clifix one, if you open your package, live package, app resources, MIDI remote script, and you go to Clifix here, you'll find that I've created, or it was actually there, a user setting text. Well, it's the same exact thing that the uh, X control text. Yeah, exact same thing, but it's in a different location. It's got a different name, right? But it's the same thing. So let's go back to X control and show you how I scripted that. At the bottom of this uh, X control text, you'll find a space, an area where you can actually script. It's actually at the bottom of the, the text. Now, here you can write all the comments you want. You can give a name to your comment. That's equivalent to the uh, name we gave between the two brackets earlier on in the MIDI clip. Whatever name you want. Make sure they have all your comments have different names though. Yeah, if they have the same name, it don't work. Then I go space equal space, and then I write the name of the control on the controller I want to hack. Now, how do I find out the names of the controls? Well, it's easy. You go in MIDI map mode in live, and you just map an empty slot. So that's channel eleven note. E minus one, et cetera, et cetera. And I can quote, write down the name of all the controls. This works with CCs and MIDI notes, by the way, yeah? It just happens that this controller sends MIDI notes, so I had to, to use the note message. So I write, this is a note, like so, comma, space, channel 11, comma, space, and that's the name, that's the MIDI note number. So, so you know, MIDI notes in, in the computer world, they're not, they're not received as G1 or F1, no, no, no. A controller sees MIDI notes as numbers, and if you write in Google MIDI note numbers, you'll find loads of charts that will give you the, the actual notes, the actual number that the notes are associated to, yeah? So you could see that minus one, E is number 16, F is 17, etc., etc., and that's how I found out the number. And so here I write 16, which is like E minus 1, comma, space, 0 is the minimum value uh, sent by the control when I release it, comma, space, 127 is the maximum value when I press the actual control, comma, space, and then I write the comment I just wrote in that MIDI clip earlier on, exact same comment. I've added something here to control the, the fundamental, the, uh, the root note of, of, of push, which is something I'll show you in the next tutorial. And here I've written a space, uh, double point, I can't remember you said that, colon, and then uh, superior to, yeah, th this kind of things, yeah. And what this means at the end, it means that when I let go of the button, nothing happens, yeah. It's just cancelling, basically, this little comment here that says do something when I release the button. It's to cancel it. So it just does something when I press the button now, yeah. So I've written all these comments, one for minus three uh, ST, one for zero, one for two, three, and five. I've also written here for other controls in the controller how to uh, set the loop length to one bar, how to reset the loop length to its original length, and how to m divide the loop length by two. It's actually multiplied by 0 0.5, but that's the same thing, right? So I wrote all these codes carefully, and you can actually see for yourself how they're written. Uh, it will give you an example of how to do it you save that you close it okay then you go to live you re you restart live so it actually sees the option text once you've restarted live should work and so now with my controller i can do the exact same controls i was doing earlier on with the transposition with that midi clip i had look look at the transposition and listen minus three plus two and there you go and it's instantaneous, right? And let's go plus five. There you go. That's it. Let's now control the loop length. Divided by two. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And back to normal. Boom. You see, that's the kind of controls. One bar, one bar, divided by two. 
Yeah, you see, and this loop length thing reminds me very much of the, what you can do with Serato or Tractor, for example. Like, and this is something we cannot easily do in live. I know you can map the loop length and the loop position here, but it doesn't really work really uh, properly. It's not really uh, safe. Yeah. So with Clifex, I can do all sorts of things. These two things I show you are specifically made or interesting for live sets or live performance, maybe. But all the comments we saw in the uh, PDF here are really relevant to production as well. So you could pretty much control a lot of the stuff you do in live, usually using your mouse. You could actually control that from a controller. And this could accelerate your workflow like really like a lot, yeah? So you see, it's a bit scary at first, that PDF, but trust me, it's not that complex and it's a huge reward, right? What you can do and could not do without Clifix is huge, right? So I'm gonna do another tutorial right after this one to show you how we can hack the scale on push two, the root note of the scale as well, so that when I actually transpose the clips in my live set, I can still play live on my push and be uh, tuned in with what's happening in the live set always, yeah? So see you on the next tutorial, bye.